don't they will take you into the hellfire ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين امين in surah an nisa give her a warning if the warning does not resolve the problem then put her to sleep separately if that also does not resolve the problem then if you think it can work then allah gives you permission to strike her but not not with a big piece of wood that will break open her skull <laughs> no it's not an act of brutality don't be stupid and come at that with us the quran is not advocating brutality huh stupid people say that let me repeat it one more time stupid people say that the quran is actually advocating an act of mercy he said use something like a toothbrush huh it is a psychological blow intended to wake her up but if she's not a kind of woman who could respond to that you might be in danger if you take the toothbrush and strike her she might take her shoe and hit you in your face <laughs> there are women in the world like that stay away from them stay away from them okay and look for a pious woman who conforms in her life and her behavior with what has come from Allah and his messenger and there are many like that in the world get rid of this one divorce her any more questions this is my opinion and no one should accept my opinion unless and until you are convinced that i am correct you should show respect for your own intellect <laughs> my teacher trained me like that so this is my opinion the jahl controls the modern world he controls the governments <laughs> he controls the political system he he controls the economy he controls the system of money in the world today hmm? his attack is most ferocious in cities and so he causes the people of the countryside to abandon the countryside and come to the cities and so today for the first time in the history we have mega cities 10 million people 20 million people huh and you have all of these high rise apartment buildings going up huh all over the place so that the countryside can come to the city where the jahl can attack them my opinion is you must move in the opposite direction the jahl said to tamam tamim dari in the hadith in sahih muslim he said when i am released i will enter every town and every city but he didn't mention kampung Kampung means for the for the listening audience abroad Kampung means village so you must move in the opposite direction i got an email from i think dubai this morning he says sheikh i'm moving out of dubai and i'm going to buy a farm in the remote countryside in oman and i'm getting out of this from dubai so you move out of the cities and you move to the countryside and you produce your own food and you must get out of range of the cell phones you know they have the what do you call them the antennas and these beam beam the radiation right so you have to try to get out of range of that there is something called fiber optics and with fiber optics you could have internet would we have no radiation no if you build a village 
in the remote countryside out of range of the cellular phones and you produce your own food which is not GM food every young woman in the world wants to have a baby boy go ask them go and ask them but they cannot get a husband tomorrow who can give them a baby boy except in this remotely located Muslim village yeah any more questions no more so we, yes two more and that's it okay two more and that's it What do you think we did tonight? It is because we are not getting a response from the scholars of Islam. This book was written 10 years ago. And no response. We want them to tell us what does the Quran say that explains the world today. So now we are moving into a different phase. Now we are publicly asking them to respond. And this is going to be on YouTube tomorrow. And we are even calling the names of our respected and learned scholars of Islam. Not to in any way disrespect them. Professor Dr. Yusuf Karadawi has written very good books learned man I mentioned his name today I hope that it reaches him to provoke him and the association of Muslim scholars that he leads come on we've waited long enough we are demanding an answer now yeah last question <laughs> The opinion about 12th of July? 2012, that the world will end on 2012? Is that why you're eating some durian now? Whenever Dajjal is beating his drum on something, as he's beating his drum on 2012, you must know something is planned. Okay? Since the world is now expecting something big, 2012. So let us not disappoint them. Hmm? What is it likely to be? I can think of a number of things. I can think, for example, of a nuclear explosion in an American city. Hmm? I can think about Israel launching her war to destroy Pakistan's nuclear plants and nuclear weapons and simultaneously attacking Iran to destroy Iran's nuclear plants. I can think about such an attack leading to regime change in Iran so that the present government which I consider to be sincere in its opposition to Israel and in its support for the Palestinian cause that this government is replaced with a government like Afghanistan Karzai government and when that happens then it will fulfill another hadith about Dajjal the Prophet said that Dajjal will be followed by 70 thousand Jews from Isfahan wearing their Persian shawls. Hmm? Uh, I can think 2012 is the attack on Pakistan will not only destroy its nuclear plants and nuclear weapons but that they'll have to break up Pakistan to ensure that Pakistan can never rise again and rebuild their nuclear capacity. So one part of Pakistan going to India, Kashmir, 
one part of Pakistan going to Afghanistan for the greater Afghanistan, Pakhtunistan going to Afghanistan, and the province of Baluchistan becoming an independent state. If that happens, then China is finished. <coughs> China can never again be a superpower. Once Baluchistan becomes an independent state, why? Because there's a Chinese built port on the Baluchistan coast facing the Gulf of Oman at a place called Guada. The Chinese intend, and the Pakistanis have now agreed, that Guada will become a naval port, not just a port, a naval port. If it becomes a naval port built by the Chinese, maintained by the Chinese, then Chinese nuclear-powered submarines and Chinese nuclear-powered ships can now have a fighting chance to patrol that area and to protect Chinese oil import. Because without oil, China is gone. <laughs> but if the attack on Pakistan takes place and Baluchistan becomes an independent state, then the first fruit of that NATO attack would be a U.S. naval, naval base in Guada. Hmm? If the United States gets a naval base in Guada, China is finished. Hmm? The other things that can happen, not only that they take over Libya, so that they're able to establish their military presence in Libya, so when Israel attacks Egypt in 2012, the attack will come from both sides of Egypt. Egypt will be cornered. But finally, that by 2012, maybe before that, but by 2012, they're able to get rid of the regime in Syria. And the Arabs who are now fighting, like they did in the First World War, <laughs> and they were deceived, <laughs> fighting in the First World War in the British Army, yeah? For, for freedom, and then ended up with what they ended up with. Those Arabs who are now fighting with American support against the Syrian regime in what I call a Yankee Jihad will eventually succeed. And when they succeed and they take over Syria, the implication will be that Russia would lose its naval port on the Syrian coast. That naval port in the Syrian coast is the only access that Russia has for a military presence in the Mediterranean Sea. That's the only one in Syria. And so the uprising in Syria is eventually meant to eventually cut Russia's throat. And that one, Pakistan, eventually to cut the Chinese throat. But that's enough for now. This is the last question. I thank you very much for coming out tonight. And uh, when the lecture is over and Salat is over, if you want me to autograph any books, please do bring them to me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.